Welcome to a new SiteGround video. My name is Cal Evans, and today we're going to learn about image optimization. We will talk about what it is, why it's important, and how you can use it to speed up your website. Image optimization is the technical term for making sure that your images are as small as possible without visible resolution degradation. Large images will slow down your website, and that, that not only affects your SEO, but also makes for a less than optimal user experience. When we optimize images, we decrease their file size, since according to experts, images are 21% of a web page's total size, this can have a significant impact. Now, there are two aspects of an image that we need to consider in order to optimize it, the format and the size. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the format of your images and how they're saved, because this alone can make a significant difference. Image formats fall into two categories, lossless and lossy. Lossless means that the compression done when the program saves into this format will not result in any loss of detail or resolution. Lossy, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. When saving images in a lossy format, you get to control the quality of the image. A lower quality score means that less detail is being saved, but it also means a smaller image. Obviously, if you're dealing with medical images like x-rays, you would never use a lossy format. However, for most images being displayed on the web, a lossy format is acceptable as long as you don't go too far down the quality scale. Just remember, if you save an image at a lower quality in a lossy format, you can't reopen it and save it as a higher quality later on. So, either be careful with this or do what most professionals do and keep an archival copy of your important images stored in a lossless format. So, what are your format options? Well, up to this point, there have really been only three main formats currently in use. PNG, JPG, and GIF. Most of these have been around for a while. Now, PNG was created as a lossless format. It has larger, larger file sizes because of this. However, it can be used as a lossy format. In most cases though, PNGs are used for pictures with intricate detail that you want to be preserved at all cost. This means larger file size. JPEG was created in 1992 by the Joint Photographic Expert Group. JPEG is a lossy format, and in most programs that manipulate photos, if you save as a JPEG, you will have the option of deciding the quality level of the image. Now, by playing around with the quality level, you can usually find a good balance between size and resolution. Remember, most cameras in use today can take pictures more detailed than the human eye can see. So reducing the quality is usually not a bad thing. Now, GIF, however you choose to pronounce it, is the graphics interchange format. It was created all the way back in 1987 by the online service CompuServe. GIF is a compressed image format, but it is lossless compression. Many meme images you see floating around the web today are GIFs because it was the first image format to actually support animation. The biggest downside to the GIF format is that it only supports 256 colors. That's not great for detailed photographs. Now, the new kid on the image format block is WebP. WebP was released in 2010 by Google to replace the other three image formats. Because of its compression algorithms, WebP images are actually smaller than all three other formats saved at the same quality. WebP images can either be lossless or lossy, depending on your needs, and it also supports animations. All things considered, WebP is the best format to use going forward when creating new images for your website. The other factor to consider when optimizing images on your website is their size. Most programs used to develop websites will just allow you to drop a sized image on the page and then resize it to be whatever size you want. The problem is that this resizing is visual only. 
If you take an image that's 3000 pixels across and resize it to 500 pixels across, the image itself hasn't changed, just the display of the image. This means you're still downloading that huge image, but just displaying it very small. A much better option is to resize the image to the size you actually need. If you only need an image that's 500 pixels across, then manually resize it to 500 pixels across. Of course, if you're using WordPress as your platform for your website, you don't need to worry about this. When you upload an image to WordPress these days, it creates several sizes for you automatically. When appropriate, your image tag will contain a new property, source set. SRC SET that lists the same image in several different sizes. The browser selects the appropriate one for the page and the device that is being displayed on and only downloads that one. Now that we know we need to optimize our images, how do we go about doing it? Well, there are two main actions to be done in order to optimize your images. First, as we discussed, compression which is essentially making your image smaller in bite size. You can implement compression by resizing your images and using the WebP image format. Second, lazy loading, which is basically telling the browser that an image can be loaded after the rest of the web page because it won't be seen until the user scrolls down anyhow. This can have a dramatic impact on your web page's paint time or the time that it takes for your page to load and display. Paint time is an important factor in determining your web page's SEO score. Thankfully, implementing all this is easy with WordPress. There are many good plugins out there that will help you manage image optimization. I've used a lot of them myself and they all do a decent job. These days, however, my go-to plugin for managing image optimization is the SiteGround Optimizer plugin, which is free for all WordPress users. It's kind of a Swiss army knife when it comes to image optimization. Let me show you how to use it. To implement image optimization using the SiteGround Optimizer, first, you need to make sure it's installed. If you don't see SG Optimizer in the admin bar, you need to install it like you install any other WordPress plugin. Once it's installed and activated, click on the SG Optimizer menu and then select the media option. The first option we're presented with is for image compression. If you're curious about the different levels of compression and how they will affect your image, click on preview. This will bring up a dialog box where you can compare an image as is versus the different levels of compression. This won't actually make any changes. It's just so you can figure out the best compression level for your images. As you can see, high compression level leaves pixelization in the background and less detail in the dog's face. Now that you've figured out how you want your images compressed, it's time to click edit and actually make the changes. First, select your compression level. I prefer low as it reduces my image size but leaves me with a quality image. Next, check the relevant boxes. I always back up the original images unless I don't have the space to do so. If you regularly back up your website, you don't have to check this box since you already have a backup copy in case something goes wrong. Next, I check that I want to compress my existing images since this is the first time I've run this operation on this particular site. Finally. I tell it to overwrite the original images with the newly compressed images. Since I've got the originals backed up, there's no sense in not doing this. Click on confirm and it will start the process. If you have a lot of images, this process may take a while. The other option in the compression settings is to force the use of WebP images. Now, if you click on this option, the SiteGround Optimizer will convert all non-WebP images to the WebP format with the same quality level. Like image compression, this operation is done in real time, so it may take a while if your site is graphics heavy like this one. Now that we have our images compressed, let's do one more thing. We can turn on lazy loading. Now, by default, WordPress marks all images except for the first three on the page to be lazy loaded. And in most cases, this is fine. However, there are edge cases that may break or at least make your screen paint weird. 
An example is if you have sliders that have graphics. If the graphics for the sliders are lazy loaded, but are visible on your screen, it won't fully paint until they're loaded. It's because of this that it's better to use the SiteGround Optimizer to control WordPress's lazy loading. To turn on lazy loading, select the Media Menu option that you can find in the main menu of the SiteGround Optimizer plugin. First, turn on Lazy Load Media. This will tell the SiteGround Optimizer to help you with your lazy loading. This allows the plugin to exclude certain images and media types from lazy loading that WordPress will allow by default. If preloading a specific image, like a slider graphic, is causing your site to act abnormally, you can exclude it from lazy loading by clicking on the pencil next to Exclude CSS Classes from Lazy Load and entering the class applied to that image in the box provided. If you need to exclude multiple classes, click the plus sign to the right and you can add more. Click Confirm when you're done. The other option that SiteGround Optimizer gives you that native WordPress does not is the ability to exclude by media type. By default, all media types that are defined by the SiteGround Optimizer are excluded from lazy loading. To adjust, you can click on any of the excluded types and they will be removed from the list. Click Confirm when you're happy with the list. The SiteGround Optimizer also gives you one more important feature, the option to define the maximum image width of, that's allowed for images on your website. Many themes and plugins come with large images which can slow down your site. If you're using any of them, you can make use of this feature to resize your images automatically to a maximum width. Images are important to any website, but if you don't optimize them, they will slow down your site. WordPress has a lot of ways to optimize your images. The problem is not that it's difficult to implement. The problem most people run into is there are so many options that it can be overwhelming. That's why using the SiteGround Optimizer plugin makes your life so much easier. It gives you the options that you need to optimize the images on your site. It takes a couple clicks to get everything set up and running the way you want it. If you aren't using the SiteGround Optimizer plugin yet, get it now for free from the link in the description below. Try it. See how easy it can be to optimize the images and make your website faster. Hey, now I want to hear from you. Have you implemented any image optimization techniques on your site? Did it speed things up? What's your favorite technique to implement? Leave us a comment below so that we can all learn from each other. I want to thank you for joining us today as we learned. I hope you found it both educational and interesting. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you click on the subscribe button on your screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon also so that YouTube will notify you every time we release a new video. Finally, follow us on social media to stay updated about all the news, trending comments, and resources for successful website management that we share. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.